So uh, thank you very much that you decided to join the session. I'm a little bit surprised that so many uh, people join this, this talk. Uh, my name is Mariusz Gil, and I would like to talk a little bit about the Saga and Process Manager and provide you some, some introduction what this concept uh, means, what are the background for these concepts, and how we can use them in our applications. So, and I hope that this talk will be um, something like inspiration for you to your own research because uh, this topic about the Saga and the Process Manager is really, really fantastic. Um, I'm a software engineer, I'm a software developer since 2000, and the last couple of years I spent in a company called Bottega, Bottega IT Minds. This is a set of trainer consultants. I'm working with different teams, time trying to adopt, for example, a better architecture, trying to um, transform a monolithic uh, application into something uh, a little bit better using using the stuff we are discussing at this conference, domain domain design, CQRS, even sourcing, even storming, all, all this stuff. And I've got uh, my own company, uh, very, very small, which is a, a source ministry. This is one man army about the consultancy and, and uh, working as a software engineer. Um, I missed yesterday uh, because I had to um, stay in my home in Poland, but I was uh, watching a tweet um, a tweet wall from the conference, and I was a little bit surprised that so many tweets were about the communication, how we are communicating with our clients, how we can learn from this uh, communication. Even today, when the Haven had this, had this talk about the, uh, what do you mean, uh, there was a very, very interesting site uh, right now about the communication, how we can communicate, for example, with our clients, and how we can learn um, from this communication to deliver a working software, working software that matters. And uh, very interesting stuff about the communication is that we've got only three types of messages, and only three type messages are completely enough to exchange some information, right? We've got, we can set, uh, we can inform someone something, and our, our other people, other systems, other objects, that something has happened. All right, so we can use some declarative sentences in the terminology of this conference. Of course, we are talking about the events, and we can inform the rest of the world, world that something happened in our site, and if you are interested in this topic, okay, you can react. Somehow, I don't care. It's just a communication from me to you. And of course, we can use some imperative sentences to ask someone to perform something. In terminology of the conference, of course, it's a command. We can uh, demand from someone some action. And of course, um, this, this command may be rejected, but this is one of the um, message type we can send uh, to the rest of the world. <coughs> and of course, I mentioned that we have three types of messages. So as you, uh, I think you can guess, the last one is about asking. We can use some um, interrogative sentences to ask someone for something. And one more time, in terminology of this conference, we can use some read models, some queries, to ask someone, some other system, um, for example, for some data, how the things, how the looks, how, how the things look like right now. And, uh, and no matter if you are talking about the communication between people, if you are talking about the communication between systems, or even objects, three types of messages, commands, queries and events are completely enough to um, model every single aspect of communication. So, <laughs> back to the roots, the, 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 the core of object-oriented programming is not about calling getter and setters, it's about uh, passing the messages between objects. So, right now we've got some, some other tools to express and visualize this communication. So, for example, I think the event storming was mentioned many, many times at this conference. We can use some of this concept to, to, to get some knowledge about the, about the project we need to um, implement. So, the event, of course, in event storming is represented in, uh, as, a, as an orange sticky note, and we can use this event concept to present some flows. Right now, the, we, can, we can start to, to, um, to model our stories, and the story is composed, of course, by, from the set of the events. The event is a particular moment of the time, meaningful moment of the time. We can point, we can name, we can attach some properties, and this, this point of the time is, for someone, very, very important. 
And we can use these events to model a flow. Are you using the event storming? Who is using the event storming? Yeah, <laughs> right conference to ask this question. <laughs> And of course, um, this is one of the um, message type I, I mentioned. Uh, the second, the command may, may be used, for example, to express some, some actual decision. When user decided to do something, we can model this, this information with this action with uh, a blue sticky notes. And we've got the information that someone um, would like to request something from our application. And finally, the, 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 the last message type, it's related to the query, the, the asking for data. We can ask our system, or client may ask our system, how the things uh, looks like right now. And we've got the, probably the state somewhere um, in, the, in the under the hood, which is composed from, from the events. And this concept, three message types like command, event, and, and query, are absolutely enough to, to, to work with clients to get um, the knowledge how the process looks like and we can finally add to some very interesting technical stuff like the famous aggregates. The aggregates, the, the, the object, it contains some business rules which has of course maybe be um, composed from the events. We can recreate the state of the aggregate from events with event sourcing, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Probably not very interesting stuff for some business guys. For us, as a developers, yeah, the aggregates, yeah, you know, the core of the domain driven design, very interesting stuff. And we always ask some question, how big or how small is your aggregate, right? But <laughs> if you remember this um, funny discussion on the Twitter, how big is your aggregate? Yeah, this is something like that. And, but from the, for the people from business perspective, the aggregates are not very important, right? And for their perspective, much more important are the flow. And the flow is composed in this scenario from commands and events. And we've got the command, event, command, event, event, command, uh, the scenario. And usually, this is, this is not so real stuff, right? This is a single path. Reality, it's a little bit different. In reality, our flow may be split under some conditions. And for example, in this scenario, the customer, the actor starts an action, customer decides to do something, and our system started to, to execute this transaction, the business transaction, and uh, finally there is a moment when the flow is split. <coughs> And of course, from the business perspective, it's very, very important what's happened here. And why this, this, this flow was splitted into one, two, three, four puffs. And for us, as developers, it should be very, very interesting too, because you know <laughs> we had to implement this, this feature. And um, I don't know what is your uh, experience with, with um, using even storming in production with business guys on big picture level, but for example, from my perspective and from my experience, this is a photo taken by, by Robert Laszczak, my colleague from Krakow, uh, from Poland. A production event storming session maybe look like that. We've got a lot of events, a lot of commands, a lot of actors, of course, a lot of questions. <laughs> Uh, some event storming boards like look someone uh, decided to switch orange with purple colors right but <laughs> but we've got a lot of situations for example like that in this situation the flow is splitted under some conditions into the paths one and uh, the upper and the, the lower one and the, the 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 conditions and the consequences should be very very interesting and of course one of the interesting, one of the many interesting stuff here is how this massive amount of, of sticky notes, commas, events are split into some contexts, into some services, into some systems. So if we've got our flow, the question is, why? I think the projector can't reproduce one color. <laughs> Sorry, there, there, are some, there are some boundaries here. One is here. <laughs> It's a very, very uh, light gray. And uh, one line is here. <laughs> and the second one is, oh, OK. <laughs> OK, do you see? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Didn't predict it. So 
uh, for us as developers, the boundaries are very, very important, right? Because probably there's a boundary of service, maybe there's a boundary of system, maybe there's a boundary of context. There's some kind of boundary here. And where are the boundaries? Yeah. <laughs> there are no boundaries here. <laughs> it's, it's quite interesting. And the second interesting, this is the first interesting thing. And the second interesting thing, if we've got a chain, command, event, command, event, there is probably uh, another missing thing here. <laughs> ah, yeah. This is what is between one event and, to, and the second command. Because you know, if this first command was triggered by user action, how this command was triggered and what is between? Um, and this is a place, this is a moment when the, the, the concept of policy introduced by Alberto um, show up. The, probably the, there is something between, right? This is a policy, this is a, another purple color. <laughs> so um, the policy is an element which is responsible for triggering the flow, right? And uh, Alberto said that every time when you hear during the event storming session term, whenever, whenever something happened, yeah, this is some kind of policy. And this kind of policy may be responsible, maybe be responsible for pushing your process forward. Based on some conditions from the past, based on some data from the past, we can push this process forward, for example, for the next, for the next step. Something has happened and everything is fine, so we can push this process forward. And if we can push this process forward, we can push this process backward. For example, where something went really, really wrong. We can roll back automatically, for example, automatically. So the question is <clears throat> when and how we can roll back, when and how we can push this process forward, and uh, who is responsible for triggering this, 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 this logic. And of course, this logic may be, be automatic, it may be manual. And uh, this, of course, depends. Depends on our domain, it depends on our project, depends on the level of automation we would like to achieve. And, um, and we've got some concept for it, right? For manual, for manual pushing the process forward, we can use just the humans. That someone must remember that if something happened in the project, if the domain, some actions must be taken. And of course, yeah, this is human, but <laughs> probably there are some, a lot of uh, problems maybe here. And if we are talking about the automatic reactions, we've got the plenty of choices. We can uh, write some listener, which is just, just listening for some event and perform an action, or we can use some more complicated um, patterns like Saka and Process Manager. And, um, from my perspective, during, uh, during the event storming session, especially at big picture level, looking for the policies is extremely important. Because, you know, using the events, using the commands, using the actors, et cetera, et cetera, we can visualize the flow, but we will probably not know how this business exactly works. And <laughs> unfortunately, if we are looking for these policies, yeah, we will know how the business is operating, real operating, but probably we will know, especially in established organization, how deep the swamp is. And um, let me show you an example. Um, I'm in the project right now, which is uh, 12 years old, more or less. And behind this project, behind this company, there is a huge, huge, huge monolithic legacy software. But it works. It earns a lot of money. And <laughs> the quality of this pro project is maybe, um, right now, okay, it's a problem, but in last years, last past years, um, it wasn't. And right now we are trying to crunch this, this huge monolithic software into many different uh, split applications using, of course, domain driven design, even storming, et cetera, et cetera. And when we touched a policies, we found interesting stuff not in code, but in the company. So for example, one of the elements of the software is uh, just uh, 
sending the invoices, making an invoices uh, <laughs> the place where the money is made. So, for example, every single time when the, 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 the mouse is closed, the mouse is changed, we need to capture the moment and start to create invoices. And of course, the create invoice is, is of course a separated huge, huge process. Some data must be calculated, uh, some invoices must be written, et cetera, et cetera. It's not just a, <laughs> a handle a single command. This is a whole process under the hood for every single customer. And uh, when we run a big picture, even storming session, we model this like that. Because the developer had the memory that, okay, under some condition, there is a cron job which send a, a signal to the, to the application and the process of invoicing is started. But at <laughs> the same time, on the same session, one person from accounting team said, you know, whenever the month changed, I've got a separated process. But uh, I create some invoices on my own. And developers didn't even know that some processes leaked from the application because the, the application wasn't able to, to support these processes. And um, we identified that a single process had two versions. The manual, which is very, very problematic because um, a single person, yeah, in this case, the company has bus factor number one. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, you know the consequences. <laughs> and uh, the second issue is that execution of this flow by the single person takes two weeks per month. <laughs> and the company even know about it. <laughs> and developers even know about it. Um, so there, there was a perfect, perfect um, example how looking for the policies uh, show you how the company uh, works really, really well. And, uh, and this is, I think, the, the reason why some companies, at least large ones, don't like the event storming, because they don't like truth, <laughs> especially in corporations. Um, but for smaller and medium-sized companies, yeah, this, okay, let's, let's fix it. <laughs> okay, so back to the root. We've got the two versions. We've got the human memory and the, the action, which is problematic, probably, and we've got some, some implementations like uh, listeners, process managers, and so on. The, the listener is obvious. I think you don't need to spend some time on that. To others are very, very interesting. But <coughs> have you ever tried to read from internet what the saga and process manager reads? If you <laughs> who tried? <laughs> and what was your opinion? <laughs> Um, if you expect a very, very crisp and sharp image, you will see something like that. Very, very fuzzy definition. What the saga is for, for this, for Stack Overflow, we've got this definition from this website, we've got this definition and everything. It's a little bit, a little bit, a bit uh, inconsistent. And this is probably because of this document. In 90, I think 1987, Hector Molina Garcia uh, wrote um, a white paper, mathematic white paper called Sagas. He introduced a concept called Saga, and the Saga was defined as a long-running distribution, long-running transaction, which may be reverted. But long-running business transaction is, is not begin commit rollback from the database perspective. This is long-running a business transaction. And this transaction is composed from steps. T1, T2, T3. And execution of these steps may take 10 milliseconds. Yeah, it's long-running. <laughs> and may take two weeks. And um, for some reasons, of course, one of the steps, for example, T3, or T4 may crash. And if something in your transaction, in, in your long-running business transaction will crash, you need to roll back. In database perspective, yeah, let, let's do rollback. But do, do you imagine that you, you are rollbacking a transaction which is <laughs> two weeks old from the database perspective? No, it's, in, it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can try, but <laughs> yeah, probably will be some, some issue in Jira to solve. <laughs> So, in concept proposed um, by Hector Garcia, 
we've got a compensations action, which means that every single step we performed, we can roll back. And every single croc, uh, every single step may be very, very quick and atomic. And uh, moreover, every single step in our long-running business transaction may be executed even on external system. It means that the saga in original concept from Garcia allows us to create a bag in rollback <laughs> like transaction on external systems. Using the uh, even storming notation, every single step, every single transaction step in our saga may be implemented this way. The command and the event, action, reaction. No matter what's happened here, if, this, uh, if execution of this command, for example, will take one hour on one week, from the Sanka's perspective, it doesn't matter. Because what is important that we, that we can execute next step when this step is finished. And we've got many different steps. And no matter if this is a single system, single service, single um, context, whatever, or we are talking about the separation, we can still have a possibility to perform and roll back an action. And probably at one moment, something will fail. Right now, uh, I, I think we can, <laughs> we, we, are, we can be pretty, pretty sure that in distributed systems, there will be a moment, and this is a matter of the time only, that someone will fail. And if you are execution, if you are executing our transaction, first step, second step, first step, fourth step, etc., etc., and finally, we will get an event which represents that something went really, really wrong. And this is a moment where our transaction, where our step in transaction failed, and the concept of saga allows us to roll back the situation. So whenever something really happened bad, let's revert the situation. So mapping this <laughs> abstract feature, abstract example for m more concrete example, let's imagine that we are talking <laughs> with this famous uh, uh, saga example about the booking. Uh, we are going to, to, to um, book a travel, and the travel is composed from, uh, from the uh, travel um, is composed from um, hotel, car, and the flight. So three external systems are involved, and we can start send our commands. So let's book a flight, flight booked. Let's book a, a hotel, hotel booked. Let's book a car, car booking failed. And the compensation steps will be cancel bookings. Or maybe we've got the two compensation steps, cancel a flight booking and cancel a hotel booking. So the original concept of Saga, this is a failure pattern, nothing more. And uh, a Saga is a distribution of multiple workflows across multiple systems, so we can, we can use it to organize uh, even a microservices, because <laughs> every single microservices may be treated as an external uh, system and we are providing a compensation path if anything fails. So, of course, probably there are some situations <laughs> when we try to revert a situation and the situation gets even worse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this may happen, may happen. But, you know, we don't, I think we don't need to program for 100% of accuracy on our code. 99% of accuracy, I think 99% of a possible scenario is usually fine. If this path will be uh, involved, if someone is on this path, it's no problem. Let's decide people uh, how to handle the situation. If the situation is very, very rare, it shouldn't be a problem. And of course, if we are, let's say, we can imagine that these three uh, or the two steps are connected to the microservices where every single microservice has dedicated storage, separated database, for example, we can decide to, to lose our AC consistency model and we can switch finally to the base where 
uh, based in basic availability, soft state, and visual consistency. Our data will be consistent when transaction will be rolled back, for example. And this is one of the very interesting patterns if we are talking about the uh, hierography and uh, uh, between microservices and you would like to create a transaction between microservices, different microservices. <coughs> so the compensation over consistency allow us to roll back without any locking on the data store. The second pattern I mentioned, the process manager seems to be very, very similar, and this is, <laughs> this is a problem. Um, because some people, uh, for, for process manager called, um, say, Saga, but the process manager looks a little bit different. So imagine, we've got this flow right now, we've got the command, and we've got the event, and finally we would like to have a, a policy which allows us to trigger some actions based on um, some event detection. However, in some situations, we would like to have a different possibility. We would like to have an option, for example, to merge flows. And we would like to push our process forward if and only if, if all these events happened in our system. So we can add in this example, a process manager, which will be responsible for listening if every single event we are expecting really, really happened. And if some conditions find finally met, we can, for example, issue a command which represents, uh, which allows us to push this, 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 this process forward. <coughs> So it means that probably this element should have a state. In Saga, in, in, if you are talking uh, about the, the failure pattern, the state, yeah, we can use the stateful interface, but in general, we can rely only on upcoming messages. We can listen for the events, and based on these events, we can push um, uh, our, our uh, compensation transactions um, uh, backward. In this scenario, in worst, in worst case, for example, we've got a time constraint. It means that uh, those three events should happen, for example, in one week resolution. And um, let me show you an example. An example is very, very simple, uh, but it, it comes from the, the real application. Yeah. The code is in PHP, but the it's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not the language is important. The important is what is between the screen and the chip set. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> the situation is like uh, something like that. We've got an application where the customers may create, for example, an account. And the customer is able to uh, create one of the two accounts, free account and paid account. And when the account will be created, the customer um, is able to create an event, like sports events, music events, something like that. And if you would like to organize free events like meetups for developers, all you need to do is just create a free account. And to create a free account, you need to confirm your email address only. But if you would like to take money for, from the, from the um, event attendees, you need to create a paid account. And to create a paid account, you need to follow uh, some, some steps. You need to confirm, enter and confirm, of course, your email address. You need to provide an information about the phone number. You need to provide an information about the bank account because the money you, are, you, you will earn will be transferred to bank account uh, you provide. And this bank account <laughs> must be confirmed. And there are, in, in, in this software, there are three or four methods how you can confirm a bank account. You can show your agreement with bank, you can send a transfer for, for example, one euro, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and finally, someone from the, uh, from the company which is running this application had to perform a background check about your company. So if you collect all these events, all, this, all the, 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 the element in this flow will be performed, 
yes, you are able to create an account. So uh, we've got a few, few events, like bank account confirmed, company background check. Yeah, th this is very, very simplified version from production. We've got the email confirmed, and finally, we've got phone number confirmed. Just every single event represent the meaningful moment of the time, as you mentioned. And finally, we've got some, uh, we've got the process. The process is a, a simplified version uh, for class which represents uh, a process manager in this, in this example. Uh, so, and one implementation, what this class um, is doing. Uh, this class is interested in all the events from the events bus, because in this scenario, all the events are transmitted on the event bus. And this, um, this, this class is trying to collect all the, all the items uh, in, single, in single activation process. If every single item will be collected, the process may be finalized. And of course, this version, uh, as I mentioned, is completely <laughs> simplified. It's not persisted, it's just in memory. Um, no, mm, no mm, multiple activation processes are allowed. But this is just for the um, uh, for the, for the for the demo. So every single time, oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. For every single time where the events will be uh, re re um, submitted to the to the event bus, and this class will be notified about it, he record this event and tr try to check if the process was completed or not. If the process is completed, the information about the completeness process is, is uh, published on the event bus. In this example, the event is published, not the command, but in general, you can perform any, any action. Uh, just send a command instead of event. And uh, moreover, this process is combined, is, is connected to the event bus Via, via routing. And um, <coughs> okay, so uh, to complete the activation process, all four events are, are mandatory because this is, this is how it looks, uh, how it was configured. All the, uh, all the events must be uh, recorded by the instance of activation process. And if we send only one, We've got on the information the email confirmed handled, but nothing was was, was happened really um, uh, as a continuation. The process is not completed. If we start to send more messages, we've got the information that two events were handled. And finally, when we decide to send all the information, all the events, to our process manager, we've got the information that the process has been completed. And of course, this is very, very simple, simple stuff because this, this, um, this object representing, um, which represents a, a, a process is held in memory and the state is only in memory. But in general, I think it's quite too, 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 too easy to imagine that we've got some persistence layer and this process for example, may last two weeks. And if we've got some time constraints in this scenario, it's very, very easy to handle. Because if we've got all the recorded events in our process manager, we can, for example, compare them and compare the, the time difference between first and last recorded events. If everything is fine, we can complete or uh, decide to, to reject our process. And the possibility to extract a very, very important logic to separated class allows us to create a different versions of this flow for different customers, for example. So the process manager, this is of course one of the possible implementation, not only one, uh, this is like a workflow pattern where we have got uh, a central processing unit which maintain and state and decide what should be done next 
based on some intermediate results. So this is definition from enterprise integration patterns. So in the real world, of okay, so course, <laughs> we need some persistence layers. So probably our, uh, our process manager will have some state and we need to correlate messages in our stream <coughs> because we've got the stream of messages right now and we've got, for example, a policy which is observing the stream of messages. And this element must be able to distinguish which elements belongs to which a process. And finally, if the process is in valid state, so we can issue, for example, a command. And of course, there are, there are much more, uh, there are many other questions we can ask. For example, if we've got this kind of flow, command, event, whenever as a policy, and the next step in our transaction, this element belongs, who owns this element? One more time. <laughs> One possible solution is that this policy will be belong to left side, <laughs> the right side. And of course, there is another possibility that this element will be completely autonomic. Whoa, sorry, sorry. And this means that. For example, if you are talking about the microservice architecture, this element may be implemented as another microservice, which contains only a logic to coordinate some other microservices. And, and this topic is very, very interesting, and uh, there are some technical challenges here. And uh, a couple of years ago, <laughs> Matthias wrote a perfect tweet. Uh, I think you all will know this, this, this tweet. There are only two hard things in distributed systems, right? Exactly once delivery, guaranteed order, and exactly once delivery. <laughs> Reality, right? Reality. And usually we expect this kind of scenario that we've got a policy, maybe this is the process manager, and we've got, we've got the uh, events in some order. And sometimes the, the, the events may be, may be delivered in completely different order or may be duplicated. For example, if you are using, if you are decided to use, for example, RabbitMQ, uh, which is a system with at least once delivery concept, it means that some messages may be delivered, for example, twice. If your, if your application decide to, to uh, crash, your, this message will be redelivered to another instance of your application. And for example, this kind of situation seems more <laughs> possible. There is no the first event, but we've got, well, we've got three instances of, of second event. And if we have no protection against this kind of situation and we are acting only on upcoming events and we are issuing the commands in this kind of situations, we can perform a different set of commands, for example, three commands uh, responsible for connected to the, to the event one, making things very, very bad in our system. So the, the question is how we can protect our application and our business processes for situations like that. If we decide, to, so what are the options? I think that the, the, at least there is one very, very interesting one, which is a state machine. The process manager may be, may be implemented as a state machine for ordering and the duplication messages upcoming to this, to this service. And then, no matter what kind of situations we've got, because there is a hidden message here. <laughs> <laughs> message from nowhere. <laughs> Everything will be fixed in state machine implemented in our policy. Um, so I've got, I, I hope that at least we, we touch a few interesting things in, in, in this area. So if you would like to, to dig deeper in this, in this scenario, um, I recommend a few things. The first one, is a website called Workflow Patterns. This is a set of very, very interesting documents. Um, maybe some of them are very, very academical, but they are representing a different set of 
concept of workflows. So some notations from BPMN, business process model and notation, um, will be presented here. Some other models for modeling the flows um, um, are presented as well. And uh, very interesting sub page. I can put it on Twitter because this card, this website has very, very bad navigation. Uh, where <laughs> Sorry, as most uh, academic website um, has. Uh, but um, there are very, very interesting uh, subpages where all the possible um, version of flow, sub split merge, join merge, are presented with graphs. And we can, as developers, we can, we can learn from this a lot. Because most of these patterns uh, are happened in our projects. And the second thing I would like to, to recommend to you is to dig f in few projects from GitHub before, uh, before you implement anything. And there are a bunch of them, uh, to, to be honest. And um, I decided to, to choose a three of them. <laughs> One is the conductor from uh, Netflix. You know, okay, probably <laughs> not all of us has a kind of problems like Netflix has, but at least we can learn something from the code. And this conductor uh, applications about the orchestration, the services is very interesting because they show how they support long running processes across the cloud of the microservices. The second is the Camunda. Uh, I think that the, I saw the Martin Schimak uh, on this conference. Uh, he worked with uh, author of Camunda, so he can uh, tell you a little bit more about the system. This system allows you to model a flow, your complex flow, using not even storming notation, but BPMN notation. And you can model, visualize this flow, and then you've got the API to this to this flow, and you can run um, your your application, which model will be supported by the flow engine, and you can even visualize the runtime of your application in Camunda. And the second from the Uber, third second uh, from the Uber is uh, uh, Cadence, which also provides you some information. I think this is written in Go if I remember correctly, but uh, the analysis of this code allows you to, to, to get some very, very interesting insight for your own research. And my last advice at this talk is not to rely on this implementation. Try to write your own small implementation to understand what is going on and then use the library if you really, really need. So I think it's for all from my side. If you've got some questions, we've got some times. And of course, I will be here to the REST conference. Thank you. Any questions? If not, thank you very much.